<laughs> what, like a boss? You know, that. Okay. You know, boy, turn that off. You submit this to hey you. Huh? I'm going to submit this to the real housewives. You are like a boss speaker, my friend. I that, enjoy guys. That's what I say. Enjoy, I love you. Whatever, man. Okay. Yay, let's go. Just got engaged. Ooh. So, in the spirit of engagement, I mean, recently was like March, late March. Four months ago. Four months ago, but Almost. we announced it on social media a week ago. Nah. Two weeks ago. Nah. Three weeks know. ago. I don't know. By the time I actually edit this, three, four weeks ago. So I found a engagement tag. So I have not read these questions I just quickly googled them and I'm like okay cool like it'll be a nice little surprise for both of us to do it it's basically our first video after engagement officially mm. on YouTube and etc etc okay so when was the moment you knew you were meant to marry each these questions are so lame okay whatever when was should I go first? Yeah, you, you already started the answer. I want to know. When was the moment that when we knew we were supposed to marry each other? I think... It's uh, a hard question. You can't uh, like... Because I feel like yeah. in the world of dating, for me personally, I was never gonna waste my time with somebody that I knew I didn't want to marry. Yeah. So that's just me. I don't really, yeah. So I don't really waste time like that. Um, you can't pinpoint on a moment, I guess, but it's it's just something that comes with understanding. I have a better understanding with it. And I will give you an example. That the first time you disagree on something and how quickly uh, you can work through it and have a solution and stuff like that and you know uh, Work as a team that shows uh, You know that this Has a future that we can stay together That's when I knew that you know no problem. I can go full-on journey with a <laughs> Engagement marriage. Yeah, a okay, second question is what part of the wedding planning process are you most excited about? and which part are you not looking forward to so we've already started looking at venues yeah we've looked at so many venues we've already looked at i guess more than 10 venues Must be, no? more than 10 but i'm really excited about outfit shopping if that can happen even with coronavirus so whenever that happens i'm really excited about that and i'm really excited to i want to really create my own invitations and I really want to create my own wedding website because I feel like I'm good at yeah. doing those things digitally so I'm really excited to do that and I'm really excited to do like more of a personalized approach to wedding planning and having the wedding so like whatever getting too much into it the part that I'm not looking forward to is just with his schedule it's really hard I feel like, and it's really like, eek. like I'm not excited about the planning that is required um, to make sure that like nothing happens in this schedule. I'm, I'm really like dreading that part. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think with the process, I'm very excited about how to make uh, the things come together. Like with the, my family and everyone, how to make them come here for the first part of the wedding and stuff like that, you know, to make it uh, possible. And of, of course, like the other thing which I'm not looking forward to is the is the 
timing. day to day stress and uh, timing because very hard to come down to a date uh, due to lack of information uh, for a date question. you know next one yeah oh i'm so excited about this question cuz are there any wedding trends that you think are overdone and want to steer clear of please don't get this started there's so 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 many i want it to be really timeless and I want it to be really like classic. I don't want it to be trendy. So I'm not doing any of this like super digital crap like that is orientated towards social media. I think the trend of like every single person trying to get viral with like, oh, don't. The sky, the, sky jumping, oh, skydiving. In, like things that are just too flashy and too showy, like I'm just not for it. Like people who sky jump into the wedding, that's fine for them maybe, but for me, not into it um creating a viral wedding dance and geet dance and it's like the best and geet dance ever no it's not it's not the best and geet dance ever like it's not a competition first of all and like that all of that competitive like things that are in the indian culture i just want to steer away from any of that and then um yeah i think i think that's the biggest thing i just want to make it really authentic and real and focused on a wedding and not for it to be viral or for it to be in like blogs or for it to be online you know it's a, it's a story you know and like you, yeah you would like to remember it as a story not a no. publicity thing stunt that you pull off which is what so many indian people our age do now mm. and it's just like dude like if you want to become famous yeah. there are other ways of doing it and don't do seen, it through a wedding yeah. and we've seen some content uh, of how authentic weddings have been done oh it's so it. nice yeah so it's that and the second thing that so that first of all and the second thing i don't want to do is um what's another thing i want to avoid oh with the videography for it to be like an advertisement of goods like you know how they zoom in on the watch and zoom in on the shoes and they zoom in on like all of that crap i don't want any of it i don't i, I, I don't want any of it um so I'm, i want to avoid that because i feel like when you look back in 20 years time and look back at your wedding video is it going to be something that like looks like a circus or is it going to be something that looks mm -hmm. really nice and sentimental that's just me i'm very like i have a very specific taste yeah that's good it's a nice taste what about you this is yeah, the same actually there's nothing different that i want yeah i just want it to be genuine yeah and i also don't want um, a lot of how you say that um no not the people i i don't want the i want there to be flexibility about the traditions and stuff like that like you know not something which should be very rigid yeah and has to be done it's it's a uh, you know a non-negotiable okay what are three qualities you admire about each other you can start first <laughs> my phone not that the phone mm. look who it is king limba king limbi come sweet okay i'll answer the question hey here's the next one hey why didn't do we hear yeah, but i'm answering question i know I like firstly that she's very passionate about uh, everything Leo's. everything she wants to do and uh, secondly she's uh, very honest no matter <laughs> anything she you know like she's very clear in the head about being honest being honest to herself and to others even if it is hard to say things and it might be hard for the other person to listen but she's honest with that and that's one. huh that's one no i said the first one you're very passionate okay that's two and the third one is that uh, she likes to hustle yeah that's one of the things that i admire about her she is a very ambitious person she wants to do a lot of things uh, and not you know waste her talent because she has a lot of it that's right okay my turn I like that you're very responsible and that you think so long term and you think 
so like responsibly about yourself and you're so disciplined when it comes to like yourself and your career and your body and your mind and um, like your relationships as well and your family. I love that sense of responsibility and the discipline that you have. The second thing that I really like, ah, uh, the second thing that I really like is that you Oh, and this is actually the best thing I like about you is you are 150% your authentic self You don't try to impress anybody. You don't feel the need to try and impress anybody You don't feel the need to like you never feel inadequate or insecure around people I mean obviously everybody has a moments of insecurity, but you are you know that you are always more than enough That's really cool about you. You don't feel like you need to brag and show off or create a perception about yourself to project externally onto people and that's so hard to find mm -hmm. it's really cool you're your best authentic self and the third thing that I like about you is that you are constantly finding yourself mm. always learning and all, like always learning about yourself and about things and about the world and that's really cool too and you're always just like very open to finding yourself. Wow. Yeah. That's cute. Deep dog. <laughs> hey, really. What are you looking forward to most about married life? Staying together and uh, be able to see each other without, you know, without like basically informing stuff like that you know? that's what you kind of have to do sometimes right now i am most looking forward to in my life chasing our goals together yeah that's a good way to put it yeah i'm really like we have already uh, jotted out our personal goals that we want to achieve together and that's something that I'm looking forward to. Do you have a dream honeymoon destination? Do I? She loves Japan. I'm like 10, dude. Japan! Hawaii! Hawaii Hawaii is incredible. I wish I could take him. Switzerland! He's living in a Yash Raj movie. <laughs> no, um, Japan. Japan. Italy! No, I mean Italy. I have never been to Italy. I've never been to Switzerland. I've never been to Japan. I've been. I haven't been. I really want to go to Japan. I was supposed to go to Korea with. <gasps> Look at the little baby! You can so cute! Huh? <gasps> it's Licky! Okay. Um, Japan. Easy. Easy. Japan and Egypt. Somewhere where I can eat vegetarian food. That's where I would go. Tofu! Japan is also tofu. That's our dream honeymoon destination. But with coronavirus, mm -hmm. what is the likelihood of that actually happening? Might have to go to just to see the Great Barrier Reef. That's it. Woo! So much fun! Okay. Do you think you'll cry or get emotional on your wedding day? I think I will get emotional. Me too, but... But if I will cry... No, because I have this horrible habit of when I get really emotional, when it's about myself, I laugh. And I laugh, and I laugh, and I laugh, and I laugh. So, When I, I propose to her, she laughs. Like, uncontrollable laughing. Like, bent over, slapping the knee, like, I will be that. I manifest my emotional intensity like that. I think Don't we'll, laugh on the I think group we'll, yeah I know I won't. I think group we'll will cry. I get emotional. I think I'll cry if my family cries. Of course they're gonna cry, they're gonna be screaming. I don't marry Betty. What do you think about wedding traditions? I think before. there's very good wedding traditions in our culture in both Sikhism mm -hmm. and in both Hinduism mm -hmm. and I would like to keep the majority of them that enforce equality between the genders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I love wedding traditions. I love Indian traditions. I love Hindu traditions. I love Sikh traditions. I love them. It's our culture. It's amazing. But um, 
the ones that are really like oppressing women out the door what about you same yeah i don't want any thing which makes the other person look like a commodity mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. what was the process of ring designing proposal planning and proposing like that's something I did. She had no idea. You? Please give credit where credit is due. Yeah, and Yashna did. Yeah, her My sister. sister. <laughs> if I had not... He does this! Uh, I'm gonna get a snack. Keep going. So we made a group. How many months ago did we make the group, Yashna? Three months ago? The proposal? Oh yeah. yeah, rings so both palace like we were looking. But like it was very difficult to find uh in India. Like we even went ring shopping to see what she likes and stuff like that, but she didn't. And it was very, very hard to uh come down to a specification because she was changing her mind all the time. I wanted she wanted like a round of princess then she wanted a band then she wanted a radiant then she like oh no princess again and stuff like that so we had to like really push her to uh, decide and like one thing because uh, it's it's something that I wanted to do and I Come. yeah that's a question that Ashna can answer better because she was the brains behind uh, planning the proposal I was the one who, like, you know, just bought the ring, basically. Uh, but the proposal planning started I about no uh, three months ago, the proposal. That's what I think. And uh, we started to think about locations, uh, timings, uh, timeline, and uh, on ground because i was still in india on ground uh, ashna and uh, shantil also they both went to a couple of locations ashna basically googled all the locations she was uh, the one who said you know hey 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 wherever i was saying it was crappy places <laughs> obi had so many important points for that story yeah. next question before i fight your ops <laughs> What was my reaction to being proposed? Well, I had no idea it was coming. I was napping before we actually had to go. So I absolutely had no idea. He was like, get dressed. We're gonna just have like a photo shoot because I'm near a venue just for like pre. Cause we were planning a wedding. Like we knew we were gonna get engaged. I just had no idea. And I was like, he doesn't have a ring, nothing, blah, 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 this and that. So, so I was like, yeah, whatever, cool. We went, he got this nice car, little Mustang, orange, we drove. And I then, took the long way because yeah he proposed it was to. so nice I was really nervous and like I said I was laughing so much like laughing so much but it was incredible no but I think one more question which I'm gonna add what's it like being engaged in corona times we feel very lucky to be able to do that actually it would have uh, sucked immensely if, if I came here and I couldn't do it because this was um, the first purpose of coming to Australia and the second one yeah. was obviously to The reason time. why that we held off announcing our engagement on social media was like why we didn't do it immediately is because we were trying to be really not trying like we were and we were wanting to remain really sensitive to everything that was going on with coronavirus in India because in Sydney it had started getting like the curb started flattening at that time actually which is why but actually no it's before no, no, the no, it, restriction yeah. so it was just right before everything it was not got good locked here, down it wasn't good and in like India in it was India. worse and then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and people were really feeling like the shock and the devastation but when we announced it we felt like like things not things had settled but People were much they more They understood, used to, yeah. yeah. Anyways, but that's what it is. We're lucky to have spent the amount of time that we have as well together post-engagement. I think that's so ideal. But we're gonna wrap it up now. Um, 
Please subscribe to my Bet channel. Anything. I'm gonna try and post more regularly, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and leave your comments about your proposal stories or your ideal proposal um, in the comments below. And I just would love to hear it. But that's it from us and my little Cindy. Right. Please like, subscribe, and follow. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>